French food giant Danon on track for its best trading day in more than four months. That's after activist investors finally got the scalp of Emmanuel Faber. He did first uh, promise uh, to uh, split off uh, the post of chairman of the board and only remain on as chief operating officer. It wasn't enough, however. Confirming it's replacing its chairman, Emmanuel Faber, French food group Danone outlined its priorities, accelerating efforts to create value for stakeholders. In 2020, Danone's shares lost about a quarter of their value. Sales fell for the first time in 30 years. Those results, due in large part to the COVID pandemic, were the reason behind the leadership shift. Pressure was high, mainly from activist investor Bluebell Capital and investment fund Artisan Partners, who pushed the company to revise its strategy, focus more on improving profits, less on Danone's environmental results. Making Danone a leading company on environmental and social standards was Faber's trademark. The productivist agricultural model of these last 50 years has shown obvious limits. Workers' unions have called on the company to stick to its social and environmental strategy, even if it means it is less profitable. They must also understand that we cannot have the same profitability as some large groups who only seek profitability without looking at what's around them. Danone said on Monday its goal is to bring both high economic performances while keeping its environmental standards. Before standing down, Emmanuel Fabel put in place a layoff and restructuring plan to turn around the group. A plan the board says it will continue to back. For more, let's go to State College, Pennsylvania. Mark Desjardins is professor of strategy and sustainability at Pennsylvania State University, co-founder of Shepherd Governance Advisors. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thanks for having me. So uh, help us sort the wheat from the chaff here. If you read some accounts, it's these evil activist investors who chose profits over saving the planet in uh, forcing out Emmanuel Faber. If you read other accounts, it's a boss who uh, had a solitary uh, method of governing, uh, didn't communicate well with his team and with his uh, shareholders, and got his just desserts. Why is he out today at Dannon? Yeah, great, great question. Um, I mean, part of this starts with the campaign, right? So you have um, you have a market right now that's created an opportunity where stock prices are down, and so activists have come in and bought stock cheap. Um, so uh, purportedly with plans to you know turn down and around, um, but ultimately in that that uh, the company needs to save face, right? They need to tell shareholders and signal to shareholders that they've uh, heard the message loud and clear, and that they need to make a decision. Um, here and um, unfortunately, Faber at the top has uh, taken the the load there, and he's been uh, departed because of that. And I mean, if you you talk to Faber and and uh, and I have and and you see how he managed it on, um, he has a long term orientation. He thinks about stakeholders. He thinks about the the long term value that can be created. And so when you have activists with shorter uh, term goals, then there can be a tension there, and that's what's happening today. Yeah, just just remind our viewers here, Danon is one of the three big um, food producers uh, in Europe alongside uh, Nestle and Unilever. And it, it's, it has invested more in recent years in things like, for instance, this um, brand that makes um, uh, vegan products, uh, All Pro. Uh, so what went wrong? Um, well, part, part of this, I mean, you in any company, right, you have missteps, you have things that um, don't create as much as value, value as others. And I mean, here with uh, Denon, we have we have a long-term strategy that if we look at the stock price, um, you know, Faber came in in 2014. Uh, that stock price has almost uh, doubled over that period prior to the pandemic, and now stock prices are down. Uh, this is a company that's still thinking about a lot of stakeholders. Where, um, you know, you have activists coming in and saying that's actually it's it's just about those short-term returns. This is what we have to fix, and that's what created this uh, this opportunity. So that doesn't bode well for the planet if. Uh we're just going to be beholden to those who uh, want profits and dividends. Um, unfortunately not. I mean, that's where my research steps in. Uh, you have 30 years of finance 
studies showing stock prices rise like they did today around uh, announcements of what activists bring. But then you look two, three, four, five years out, and it, and it really doesn't, right? I've looked at campaigns starting in 2000 up until 2016, um, and then the five years that follow, so up until today, and, and it's clear, employees, other stakeholders, communities, the planet, uh, they don't fare better when you just go solely after a short term uh, a share prices, and that's the way you manage the company. So that, that, that might happen here. That's the risk. Marc Desjardins, uh, you wrote a paper where you gave basically tips on uh, how to counter activist uh, shareholders who don't have uh, the company's interested hearts. And you spell out one thing, which perhaps Emmanuel Faber did not do well, which is uh, communicate better with the long-term shareholders. I mean, that that's what ha has to happen here, right? So you have multiple activists coming in. Uh, they've They've solicited support. They have an idea. They're trying to rally shareholders against uh, this board, against this management team, and ultimately it comes down to convincing other shareholders that actually management, that it's, you know, Faber has been in here for seven years, the existing company, the existing strategy that's been put in place, that's going to actually maximize the long-term returns. And so, yeah, a big, big part of that is messaging. Um, and that's, that's what has to happen here. That's part of the research that I've been doing to sort of uncover these adverse longer term consequences that, you know, there hasn't been. There's this, been this gap of research in the past. And so that's what uh, that's really on, on management now to do that. This is a, a, a tragedy in two acts for Emmanuel Faber, since uh, there was a f at first he uh, conceded the uh, concept of giving up the uh, chair of the board of administrators and just remaining on as chief um, um, as CEO. In France, the tradition is that you're both. You're 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 the super boss. You're the you're you're not uh, one or the other. You're both. Should he maybe have uh, spun that off sooner? And actually, his death knell, they say, is because uh, the person he was putting in place, in in place to to be the chairman of the board was a crony of his. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that's the case that he should have done this sooner. There, there's part of the, the um, popular belief, right, in, in, in governance is that you need to always, always separate the CEO and the chairman roles to support shareholders and maximize value. And that's not the case. There's efficiencies that can come there when you have someone who's managing the company, also overseeing the board and transitioning what's going on in management to the board of directors. So I, I don't know. Uh, necessarily if that would have helped. And I mean, in this activism campaign, you have that as part of the uh, rhetoric or, around what's going on here. But ultimately, you know, there's a bigger picture that these activists have in mind rather than, you know, just separating uh, these roles. So ultimately, um, if you do want to have a more sustainable way of selling food in the future, because this is a, such a crucial issue uh, for the planet, uh, what do we do? Uh, so it, go, it goes back to what you said earlier. It's about messaging. It's about getting uh, shareholders on board. Paul Pullman did this well at Unilever that you referenced. Um, when he came on, he said hedge funds have a place in society, but no place in a company like ours. And so it is around knowing your shareholders about where the value is being created. It's around education. It's about understanding the trade-offs. It's not about uh, what we often get confused with is, it, is its profits or purpose. And it's not. It's about a purpose that create profits in the long term. So it's whether you're on board with an activist where most of the value will probably be realized in the short term, or you're on board with a long-term strategy and most of the value is actually gonna come in the long term. And we need to understand that so you know we can set companies up better to do both the profit and the purpose, and that's thinking long-term. Marc Desjardins, Professor of Strategy and Sustainability at Pennsylvania State University. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thanks very much for your time. Stay with us, there's more to come, more news, plus the day's business and sports.